Hey, it's High Tech Dad, and today I'm going to go over some tips that you can do to optimize your Mac after installing Yosemite. So I produced this uh, blog post back in October, and I had noticed that my Mac was starting to slow down, so I looked through a bunch of different sites and compiled uh, some tips that I think will help. I've gotten a lot of feedback on this post, so Hopefully this will help you out. So let's take a look at some of the tips that I have outlined and we'll get your Mac running on Yosemite a little bit better. So the first tip, and this is always good with any type of a install or upgrade, is you should uh, repair permissions. Now you can do this directly without having to boot to a recovery partition or anything like that. Simply highlight your Macintosh hard drive and click repair permissions and it'll start going through uh, depending on the type of hard drive you have. If you have an SSD, it'll go a lot faster. If you have a smaller hard drive, it'll go a lot faster. But basically, you want to do this uh, pretty regularly. So um, be sure that it runs all the way through and this can help with a lot of issues apart from your Mac running slowly. So I forgot to mention in the previous step to do the verify and repair disk permissions. You do this through the disk utility program, which is found under the utilities folder under applications. This comes with all Macs. Um, so as you can see, my uh, permission repair is complete. Nothing major coming out. This is because I do this fairly regularly. The next thing that you can do is verify the disk structure. And you do you can do this uh, while your Mac is booted, but if you want to do any type of repairs, uh, you have to do that when you have your recovery partition booted. Um, so I ran the, the verified disk earlier. It does slow down your Mac at times, so I wasn't able to record it, but it went through and it found that everything seemed to be okay. If when you do the verified disk, you encounter some errors, you will have to reboot from a, a recovery partition or from a, uh, another boot device and run the repair disk. So the next two steps of resetting the system management controller, otherwise known as the SMC, and also resetting the PRAM, uh, I can't really show here because this takes place when you're booting up a computer. Uh, it does vary on the type of Mac that you have. So there is a knowledge base article on Apple. You can see the link here. But basically, you are going to be turning off your Mac, plugging in the, the power cord, holding down the left shift option, control, and power button simultaneously for about 10 seconds, and then uh, releasing the keys after about 10 seconds, and your Mac will re restart and it'll reset the, the SMC. For uh, the resetting of the PRAM, it's kind of similar. This is again, uh, when you're starting up your Mac, this time you press the power button, you press Command Option, P and R keys in combination, and hold it until your Mac restarts. And then you will hear the, the startup chime or bong sound twice, uh, meaning that the PRAM has been reset. So this is something that you can do periodically. I have found that, that the resetting of the SMC actually does help with a variety of issues. So the next tip is actually found within the system preferences and this is where you're going to reduce the transparency of menus and, and things like that. I, I saw some threads about this in some of the support forums and thought it would make sense. So you go into your system preferences, go into accessibility, and you will see a variety of things that you can control and under the display section you will see the reduced transparency toggle. So this is something that you'll want to actually click on and it should help give a little bit of speed back to your Yosemite installed Mac. So this next tip was actually a pretty big one uh, that I found uh, a lot of complaints about this and a lot of confusion about it. So 
we're back in the system preferences. And if you go into the security and privacy setting and head over to the file vault tab, for some reason on some upgrades, file vault is uh, enabled. And as it is encrypting all the data on your disk, it can slow your Mac down to a crawl. So uh, there are a couple of things you can do. You can, before you do the upgrade, you can turn off File Vault, or um, as part of the upgrade, sometimes it asks you if you want to enable File Vault. I would recommend just turning it off um, unless you have a lot of time to wait for all of the encryption of all the content on your hard drive to take place. So there are some people who enabled it and it was slowing down their Mac. And there are ways, I didn't list them out in my blog post, there are ways to disable File Vault as it's going through to basically stop the process. But uh, I'm not sure if I would recommend that because it may cause some instability of your, your file structure. Um, so if it's enabled or being enabled, I would just sit back and wait for it to finish. It may take hours or, or longer, um, but I just leave it off for now and that uh, keeps the speed of the Yosemite Mac pretty decent. So again, back in the system preferences, Spotlight has been improved quite a bit uh, with the Yosemite upgrade, but as a consequence of that, it is now indexing even more things. So if you want to speed up the indexing or you don't need to search for everything that is offered here, as you can see, there's a ton of stuff that uh, Spotlight can index. You can unclick a bunch of these and it will not only reduce the size of the Spotlight uh, index data file, but it'll also help um, when it is indexing to not take as long. So this is something I would definitely take a look at and really see if you need every single thing in here being indexed and used in Spotlight. So the next few uh, steps, I can't really show that easily. Um, some of these are, are pretty obvious, but you would be surprised at how many people actually neglect it. And it's, it's pretty much like doing some spring cleaning on your Mac, but doing it pretty regularly. So the first thing that you might want to do is free up some disk space. Um, if you don't need things, delete them. Make sure you clean out your downloads folders. Um, you can move things to an external hard drive. Uh, if you ever need to find out how much disk space you have, you can go to the Apple menu, do About This Mac, and then you click over on the storage side, and you can see how much stuff is being used and how much free space you actually have. So that's one thing that you can do. Another thing uh, that I really recommend doing is updating your apps regularly. Um, a lot of times uh, app developers may be a little bit behind after a new version of the operating system is released. So be sure to check regularly on the app updates and app store. There's a good third-party app that I recommend called AppFresh, which will actually go through and scan all of your installed hard drives and see if there are any applications that need updating. Um, another thing that you can do if you are sort of a, a DIYer and like hacking your, your computer is install a faster or bigger hard drive. So I've done this before. Um, I replaced a hard drive on a 2010 MacBook Pro. Also replaced the battery. There's a video and an article um, on my website as well as a video on YouTube on, on how to do that. Um, if things are really, really, really bad, you can always do a clean install, but be sure that you have a backup of all your applications and data. Um, this may eliminate some, some problems, and it's a little bit different than doing an upgrade. An upgrade sometimes leaves some issues behind. If you do a clean install, you know you're starting from scratch. Uh, adding more RAM always is a great thing to do to any type of computer that you have if you have the capacity to do that. So again, you can go over to the Apple About This Mac and you can uh, take a look at the different types of things that you have in there. 
you can take a look and see how much RAM you have installed. This one's maxed out right now, but you may have slots available to uh, do some other things. If you want more details, you can click on the system report and there is uh, information about the memory. So it gives you uh, how much you can install and if you can upgrade the memory at all. So that's something you should definitely take a look at. Uh, so then if you are really struggling with Yosemite, you can always roll back to Mavericks, uh, the previous version of the Apple operating system. This is tricky. Um, rollbacks are always hard. It really involves doing uh, lots of backups ahead of time and hopefully you have backups prior to installing Yosemite. Um, but eventually you will have to upgrade to Yosemite. So I would use this as a last resort unless you're uh, completely dead in the water. So um, I encourage you guys to, if you have questions or have tried other things that uh, have helped with you, I would recommend that, that you leave a comment on this video. I have lots of comments actually on my article um, with people trying lots of different things that seem to have helped. Um, people saying what's successful, that sort of thing. So take a look at my website or just do a search for tips to optimize Mac Yosemite installation and you'll hopefully come to my blog post. So anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me on Twitter and I'm at High Tech Dad. Um, you can head over to my Facebook fan page and that's at facebook.com forward slash HTD blog. And as always, I have lots of different types of content on my website and that's at www.hitechdad.com and hopefully this helped you guys out.